So do you really save money by purchasing a jumbo spot kit? Let's take a look. In some ways, this was an accidental video. What happened was I ordered a fully assembled jumbo spot from an eBay seller I'd used before, but ended up with a jumbo spot MMDVM modem kit despite what the box said. I accepted a partial refund and kept the modem kit. I also used that partial refund to separately purchase a Pistar Zero W and a micro SD card from Amazon. We'll be putting all that together in this video. Pistar computers are used in a lot of hobbyist situations and come in several models and kits. Since a hotspot doesn't need a lot of computing power and the Pistar Zero W includes a Wi-Fi capability, they're often used in the Pistar-based hotspots. A basic Pistar Zero comes in two configurations. One is with the 40-pin GPIO board included, and the other is with the GPIO board installed. Installation includes pressing the mounting pins through the circuit board holes and soldering the underside to secure both the physical and electrical connections. Pistar Zeros with the GPIO board installed cost about $8 more. And since I don't like soldering, I chose the Pistar with the pre-installed board. The MMDVM modem circuit board is called a hat because it sits on top of the Pistar Zero using its sockets to connect to the pins on the GPIO board. In fact, that press together connection is pretty much the heart of the entire assembly process. Small screws and tiny spacers complete the installation and the hotspot's cover just snaps onto its base. Let's go through that process. Okay, so let's start with the Raspberry Pi computer itself. This is the GPIO board that I mentioned, and you can see that the pins are just soldered here on the back side, and that was the part that I, I purchased complete. Uh, as opposed to my uh, doing it myself. Um, the board has the processor, it has the SD card slot here, it's got a uh, HDMI here, and then two um, USB uh, mini connections here. And I believe this little guy right here is for uh, an HD camera if you were to use that on some other kind of project. So that is our Pistar board. Now, the next thing we're going to be working with then is the hat modem. Uh, the OLED screen is mounted in this one, and it's got a little cover on it, so I'm going to pull that off. And it's got all its components, and then it's got the uh, uh, screw-type connector here to mount the antenna. Now, on the back, this is where the primary connections are going to be made, and so I'm going to press the pins uh, on the ends of the GPIO board into this particular uh, set of sockets. And I want to be careful so I don't uh, bend any of the pins when I put them together. And that's the heart of the installation. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be watching is to make sure that the pins from the bottom don't come up as far as touching these little backside solder joints from the OLED installation. Now some kits you get, you can install this yourself, and so you want to make sure you make these um, protrusions on the bottom as short as possible so that you don't end up shorting things out with uh, unused pin from the modem's perspective, but making contact. So let's put that together now. So I'm going to look for the pins, make sure I get it in the end. Now these are very tight fitting and so you want to try to make sure that you've got them in and, um, and you don't get them way off center because they're, they're, they're not going to want to go together if you've got too much of a tilt. So I've got them both in there now. Just going to apply some soft pressure 
and now that I've got them together and uh, the hat is now on the computer and you can see there's space between those pins uh, and the solder joints for the OLED. So that is pretty much uh, the completion of the electronics of this little guy. It's pretty simple but now we're going to put it into the case uh, and that involves just a couple of screws that I'll show you right now. So I did a match on the case to make sure that I had the uh, the various outlets and holes and stuff aligned. So I've got this in there the correct way. You know, the antenna is here and the hole is here. Uh, and so I know I've got this on those uh, little screw mounts correctly. So I've got the first screw down here. It's just loose and so I'm just going to go through the top into the screw. and screw it gently into the, the bottom of the case. Now in this case I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I've got a little <clears throat> forceps that I hope I can get this in there with. Got that now just, just snug. Now the trick to this I discovered because these little screws are hard to fish into there, is that not to tighten the first one down all the way so that there's a little bit of play in the board till you get the screws aligned with the uh, receptacles on the case. Now on the front side we're going to do the same thing except we're going to do it just with a longer screw and with a spacer. Let me show you those. So the screw is longer, it's going to go through the top, and because on the back side it's got the pins holding it up here, we need this little plastic spacer to hold it up. So what I'm going to do is drop the screw through the top into this spacer and get it aligned, do it on the other side, and then while I've got some flexibility work to get the, um, the screws aligned with the receptacles on the bottom. Here I've got the little spacer in my hemostat that I use. There we go. That one went in really easy. And then on the other side, again, I've got the spacer there. Drop the screw in. And so now it's just going to be a matter of using the screwdriver and, and getting a little bit of side-to-side -side pressure to make sure I've got them aligned with the... Uh, the receptacle there on the bottom. So again the trick here is to not have all of these mounting screws in tight until you get them threaded. And so now I've got them all threaded into those uh, the, rece the respective receptacles. And now it's just a matter of, of screwing them down tight. One down. down, it's snug. Go back to the back side, get that last quarter of a turn done there. And we've got that all assembled. Now, our next step is to snap the case on, and that'll be pretty easy to do. We know which way to do that since we've got the hole here for the OLED and the hole here for the antenna. So we'll just slide that down. And there are a couple of little uh, tabs here on the end that uh, these will fit in. You see the holes right there. Okay, push in there gently and get those tabs aligned. And so it fits tight and you need to go at this gently because the circuit boards, you don't want to break those. You don't want to, you know, get this caught in this upper hole. Uh, but, you know, with some subtle pressure and spreading the top a little bit, uh, it just took a couple of seconds to push that down over the top. And now then the last piece we have is the antenna. 
and that just screws on. So we'll just do a quick little look around. We've got the USB here, it's aligned, USB here, it's aligned, the HDMI there, it's aligned with the case. This little half moon shape is covering the SD card input and that uh, slot is there so you'll be able to get the SD card in. Uh, and then this is, uh, I think, a camera thing and that's aligned too if you wanted to uh, have a different project where you'd be mounting um, some other kind of device. So all in all, we've got this thing together. This whole project took um, maybe 20 minutes to uh, get that all together. And so now we're gonna be moving into the, uh, the programming side and getting the SD card set up. There are several YouTube videos about how to set up a Raspberry Pi operating system on an SD card. There are two basic ways. One is to go to www.raspberrypi.org slash downloads. There, you can place a PyStar image on a new SD card. I'd recommend not formatting it. Just start with the imaging process on that page. Much of the image will run in partitions that Windows can't read anyway. Here's what that will look like. So now I've gone to the raspberrypi.org downloads page. You see it's labeled as downloads here. And I'm going to be using Windows, so I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi imager uh, for Windows. And so I'm going to click that. You can see that downloaded, so I have that. So I'm going to open. and install it when I answer the security question is yes and it's going to ask me to install so I'm going to say install took only a couple of seconds I'm done and I want it to run it so I'm going to run it so I'm going to choose my OS and I'm going to use the recommended Raspberry Pi OS, and I'm going to go to my USB choices. It's mounted as E, and that's where I have my USB card. And I'm going to select right. Looks like this might take a while, so we'll skip forward in time to when it finishes up. So the write's complete, and now it's going through the uh, verifying the image process. Okay, so we've got uh, the write and verify done, and it tells me that I can now remove the SD card from the reader. That whole process took about five to six minutes and how long you take will depend upon your internet connection and how fast your computer is. So we'll hit continue. And that's it. Now we've got our operating system on our SD card. The other way is to go to www.pystar.uk slash downloads. Download an operating system that is current and includes the RPI heading. That's RP in capitals and a small i. Those will work with the PyStar 0W. You'll need to download two additional free pieces of software. One is SD card formatter. You'll use that to format your new SD card. Don't use the Windows FAT32 formatter. The other is Bellina Etcher. You'll use that software to transfer the image you downloaded from PyStar to your SD card. When done, go to www.pystar.uk slash Wi-Fi underscore builder dot PHP. Enter your country code, your network's SSID, and your password. Be sure you're connecting to a 2.4 gigahertz network. You'll receive a small file called 
WPA underscore supplicant dot C-O-N-F. Drag and drop that file to the root directory of the SD card. That file will handle connecting to your Wi-Fi network. If you've downloaded more than one of these files, Windows may attach a parentheses one or parentheses two to the file name. Be sure to remove the parentheses from the file name. The system is looking for a file with only the WPA underscore supplicant in the name. Hopefully, when you place the SD card in your jumbo spot and plug it into a USB charger, it will boot up within a couple of minutes and you'll see the MMDVM scrolling across the screen. Whether you got a fully assembled jumbo spot or built one like we did here, the SD card is your biggest point of failure. I tried both methods above and neither SD card would boot the PiStar. I ended up using Win32 Disk Manager, another free program, to duplicate an SD card from one of my other jumbo spots that was working and it booted right up. So with three jumbo spots, I've had one that worked right out of the box, one that I needed to do the etcher process to image a new SD card, and the third I duplicated a working SD card. In all cases, everything ended up working, but I ended up devoting a bit more time to troubleshooting than I had hoped for. Fortunately, the troubleshooting was more about getting a good image on the SD card and not dealing with configuration files and other programming kinds of things. Access the PyStar device by typing PyStar in the URL line of your browser. If you are adding a second or third jumbo spot to your network, use your router's menus to identify devices on your network and note the IP addresses of the two or more PyStar devices. You can also use a free network device search tool like Advanced IP Scanner to identify the IP addresses for the PyStar devices that you have. Instead of using the PyStar URL to call the device dashboard, you'll use the IP addresses to access each different device. You can have several devices open in different browser tabs at the same time. The device's username is PyStar and the password is Raspberry. As you've seen, assembling your own jumbo spot is pretty simple. You probably won't save a ton of money sourcing everything separately, but it's a fun project. I've got some hotspot programming videos for specific radios here on the Gadget Talk channel. Please look for those for the next steps in getting your hotspot ready for your particular radio. Likes and subscriptions are very important to small YouTube channels like this one, so I really appreciate you making those extra clicks. Speaking of clicks, click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.